Friends, I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this fantastic Friday. And I'm recording this on Thursday, so keep that in mind. But I know on Friday we're supposed to be getting some rain. Uh, pray that it doesn't, because we want to have our first Friday Family Film Festival uh, this evening. But keep in mind, if it's raining, if it's too wet, we will move it to Saturday. Pray for that. Come out and join us if you would. And then this Sunday, of course, great day of worship as Charlie Kuykendall begins his uh, ministry with us. You come and join us for that. It's Mother's Day. Let's pack the house and, and honor our mothers and uh, make this a great day on Sunday. Nine o'clock Bible study, 10 o'clock worship. But if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Jude, back of your Bible, just before the book of Revelation. It's a little book, but it's packed with a lot of powerful truths. And as we've worked our way down to, to verses six and seven, keep in mind what Jude is doing. He's talking about the fact that these false teachers are coming in and that they're reserved for judgment, just like Israel was. When they came out of Egypt, to God had delivered them. He loved them, but they rebelled, and he judged them. All of them died except uh, Joshua and Caleb. Then the angels that left heaven uh, because they found the women on earth beautiful, and they had sexual relationships, and because of that, the, the Nephilim, the giants, came into existence, and God has judged them, and they're bound in uh, the eternal darkness. But then we come to verse 7, and this story is one that we, we probably all know. He says, uh, and, and keep in mind, he's talking about the, this judgment. And, and he says, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, a couple of things there. You remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot, Abram's nephew, had decided to go and, and live there. And uh, it was a horrible place. In fact, when uh, God looked down from heaven and saw the great sin that was there, exceedingly abundantly more than what was going on in, in other places, he, uh, he, he sent messengers to Abram. <clears throat> and I believe that uh, the main guy was Jesus himself. And uh, the two angels that left Jesus talking with Abram, they go to, to Sodom and Gomorrah. They find Lot to warn him. And you remember what happened? The men wanted these to, these uh, visitors to be brought out so that they could have uh, immoral sexual relationships, homosexual relationships with them. And homosexuality was a big part of the sin that was going on. But I want you to keep in mind here, all sexual immorality is sin. Keep that in mind. Adultery is sin. Uh, uh, sexual relationships outside of marriage, before marriage, doesn't matter if, if we don't honor the marriage contract and the, the gift that God has given us in these sexual relationships between one man and one woman for all of, of our lives. Understand, we miss the blessings and we face the judgment of God. And because of their sexual immorality and their going after strange flesh, the uh, euphemism for, for homosexual behavior, they were set forth as an example. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire. God sent fire from heaven. And uh, archaeologists think that they may have found the spot. And they, there's evidence of, of, of pottery that was melted because of fire that was extreme and, and, and so many things that, that we could talk about. But understand, they were set forth as an example. And listen to what he says, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now get this, what he's talking about here is these people who were part of the, the immoral behavior in Sodom and Gomorrah are even now suffering in, in eternal fire in the place that we know that's called hell right now because of their sin. Now listen to me, God loves you. God loves me. God loves all of creation. In fact, he says he loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary so that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. In, in Peter's letters to the church, he makes this statement. He said, God does not want anyone to perish. He wants all to come to repentance. But unfortunately, many will not. They will not hear the message of the gospel. They will not listen to the message of the gospel. They will not see the glory of God in his creation, and they will never turn to him. But it's our responsibility to get the word out and to tell them that there's hope in Jesus Christ. There is no sin so great that he cannot forgive. Keep that in mind today. Come to the Father. Pour out your heart to him. All you have to do as the, the Bible says, is called on the name of the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. 
Think about that. All of your sins wiped away, and you'll never have to worry about the judgment that comes to those who reject him, who rebel against him. Listen, call me today. Come by and see me, and let's talk about what you can do to know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. I want you to have a great day today. Know that I'm praying for you as you listen to this. Be blessed.